Hey, Worship Arts class. Um, this is a sample devotional. I want you to see what I'm going to be looking for when we come back and start our speeches on the 11th. Um, if you see the video cut and I kind of jerk in the video, that's because I still have three kids at home. We are done with the official homeschooling, but now they are off adventuring in the fields by our house, so I'm sure they will be back in at some point. So just ignore the blips. It's because I've cut out an interaction with them. Um, so my devotional that I want to do um, comes from the book of Acts. And I want to answer the question, why worship God with the answer? Because God is wholeness and wholeness is found in God alone. Um, now I have a visual aid. You do not need a visual aid for your speech, but I'm so excited about this. So some of you may remember we got chickens this summer and then on January 1st, look what I found in our coop. Isn't that the most beautiful little cute brown egg? I came out and this perfect little egg was just laying in the coop and I gasped. It was like Christmas all over again. <gasps> There's an egg! This is a big deal to the suburb girl right here. And what I noticed about it is uh, they talk about sometimes when your chickens start laying eggs, they're real goofy. Like they're misshapen, wrongly formed, the, um, the uh, shell is not firm enough. And as I was looking at this, this first egg, um, or this is our third egg now, um, just how perfect and whole this particular egg in the, is. And also what's cool is when we opened our first egg that we got back on January 1st, the yolk itself was like dark orange because we've been feeding our chickens um, fresh greens. I'm like sprouting greens on my counter because, you know, got to have hobbies. And compared to the store-bought eggs that I have le had left over, I made a whole thing of eggs and the, the chicken egg that we got out from our coop was dark orange and then the um, one from the store is light yellow. So um, I knew that um, my egg was more nutritionally valuable, okay? And so I want you to keep that those eggs in mind when you think about this idea of wholeness at the beginning. Because the definition of wholeness, that word that we use, is it is a state of forming a complete and harmonious whole, a unity, or a state of being unbroken, undamaged. So that little egg has wholeness to it. It is unbroken, it is undamaged, and it is harmonious. It is perfectly healthy. So if we think back to Genesis 1 and 2, over and over again we see everything was good. Okay, God creates something and it is good. And he creates the next thing and it is good. And he fills the whole earth and at the end when everything is complete, he says it is very good, putting his stamp on appro of approval on creation. And at that point, creation was perfectly whole. It was what it needed to be. Um, there is peace. There is relationship. There is food. There is abundance. There is perfectly clean water. Um, there's no sickness. There's no strife. There's no death. There's no part of creation that is broken on what God has made on this earth. It's only when Adam and Eve reject God that we lose wholeness. And you see that tumble. They've rejected the vertical relationship, and now there's no vertical wholeness. There's no vertical relationship peace. We've declared war against God. Um, and then internally, immediately they become afraid and shame. Their shame, it says shame comes into their lives. And they're trying to um, sew clothing for themselves. And they're hiding from God when he comes to look for them. And then when he asks them to be held accountable for what they've done, Adam blames Eve. Eve blames the servant. So there's brokenness and horizontal relationships. So there's brokenness vertically, brokenness internally, and brokenness horizontally between Adam and Eve. What I also think is very interesting that we're going to see again as I talk about this is that the spiritual brokenness or internal brokenness happens first and the physical brokenness follows, okay, which gives us a hint as to what type of beings we are and why humans are different from the rest of creation. Um, so why should we worship God? Well, first of all, because he... that blip in the screen brought to you by second egg. It's a big deal. Okay. Where was I? Okay. Why should we worship God? Um, first of all, because he is whole. And when we reject him, we get nothing but brokenness. Um, but there's more than that. And that's where it gets to Acts chapter three that I want to read this with you. Okay. 
Um, God is wholeness. From him comes wholeness. In ourselves, when we are cut off from him, we are nothing but broken. Um, brokenness finds its end in our death eventually. Um, and so remember, spiritual death happened first. Internal brokenness follows and then physical death eventually follows to all of us. Um, we get to Acts chapter three and we remember this is after the life of Jesus. After he has come, he has lived a perfect life in obedience to his father. He dies on the cross, an innocent, truly a hundred percent, the only one we could say completely innocent in our place. He bears the wrath of the father because remember he cries out, my, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So the father has turned his back on his son and poured out his wrath that is what we we deserve on his son. Jesus bears that for us. And then Hebrews tells us it's because of the power of his indestructible life, because of who he is, not only as fully human, but as fully God, but he breaks the chains of the grave. God raises him from the dead. Okay. And that's basically like a check clearing in the bank that shows that his payment was enough. He comes back from the dead. So then in Acts, he has sent his disciples out to preach the good news, to spread the news of the kingdom, that wholeness, for the sake of this devotional, can be had. So we get to chapter 3. I was reading this in my quiet time a couple days ago. It says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a man who was lame from birth, so some something happened, some birth defect in the womb, he's been lame, he can't walk. Um, was being carried in. They laid him daily at the gate of the temple that is called Beautiful Gate to ask for alms of those entering the temple. So he's begging for money. Seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple, he asks to receive alms. And Peter directs his gaze at him, as did John, and he said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who had sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So I'm going to pause there for just a second. We see right here a powerful example of God's power restoring physical wholeness to this man. And I think it's so interesting that this is a wholeness that he never had. He was born without it. It wasn't like there was an injury at some point in his life and he had started out physically whole um, and then he lost it and then it had been healed. This was a wholeness he had never experienced in his life. And Peter and John come in and they're like, I'm not just going to mitigate your circumstances by giving you some money since you can't work for a living. Instead, it's Christ's power that comes in and through them just saying, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, be healed, get up and walk. And his whole physicality that's been completely broken his whole life, and we find out later he's over 40 years old, so over 40 years of brokenness, He's whole. His physical body is made whole. And and the proof of this is it's not just like he staggers like a little, you know, newborn giraffe to his feet. He jumps up and he's leaping and running. So we see that it's not just like the physical ability to walk was restored, but like perfect muscles, perfectly formed tendons, things that had never worked right were all in perfect working order and he didn't have to physical therapy work up to them. But we keep going and we see that this physical wholeness was actually given so that true root spiritual wholeness could be declared to all the people there. So this miracle wasn't about just this one guy. The physical part was, but it was to open the door for the rest of these people to hear the truth about wholeness. It says, while this man clung to Peter and John, all the people around them, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's portico. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. 
You denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. That's the whole episode with Bar Barabbas. Barsabbas, whatever. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and it's his name, by faith in his name, that has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given this man perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted as ignorance, as in ignorance, as um, also did your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. And here is where the wholeness comes in, that Pe Peter is preaching them. He says, repent, therefore, and turn back. Okay, because they'd rejected God. They'd rejected his Messiah. They crucified his Messiah. He says, repent and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. And that's where the real wholeness comes in, the message of wholeness. The physical thing was for that lifetime. Okay, that 40-something-year-old man, the physical healing was for the however many decades he had left on this earth. But Peter and John were getting right here at the, the eternal wholeness that all of us need, the eternal restoration that all of us need. Our sin is what separates us from God. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that is against God and who he is. And so he says, repent, turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. The idea of blotting is to push down and take out the color from something. I have to blot clothing when stains happen all the time. If you scrape it, it digs it into the fiber. If you blot it, it starts to pull that color out. And he says, take, you know, repent so that your sins may be blotted out. And then times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now, this is where I thought it got interesting because this whole idea of wholeness, I was looking up what does the world say about wholeness? Remember, the definition is something that's unbroken, undamaged, harmonious in its whole, unified, okay? I looked up a couple quotes on wholeness of what our culture is currently saying about it, and this is what Rod Stryker says. I don't know who Rod Stryker is, but he had a little quote with a fancy picture behind it, and I was like, well, that's pretty telling. He says, we are already complete, all we need is the clarity to recognize the wholeness, wholeness that is in us. And then Dashama Kona Gordon, another person with a fancy background, says, The path to wholeness starts by loving yourself. It always starts there. If you love yourself, you will do whatever it takes to restore your health and happiness. So the world is telling us, you're already complete. You just have to realize it. And then they're also telling us, you're not complete. But the way to be complete is to start loving yourself. It, that, once you love yourself, you'll do whatever it takes to restore the thing that you you were already complete. Wait, okay, it doesn't make any sense. The world world can't make sense of this without God being at the center of this. Um, to say that I'm already complete um, is completely ignoring, ignoring the fact that I'm not. I think all the anxiety and depression and stress that we feel is knowing that we're incomplete. We can feel it. We know that we're broken. Um, I think of it as like... Oh, another quote I heard was, uh, we have to embrace the contrary things, the broken part of us, in order to be whole. Okay, that's another thing that doesn't make sense and ties in with the first two quotes, okay? If I have something that is broken in me or something that is wrong, to embrace it doesn't actually help. Yeah, it may be embracing the whole me. Like, oh, look, it's it's the, u the, the unified whole part of me. Okay, but if my physical body is struggling with cancer, I'm not going to embrace the cancer and be like, it's just a part of me. It makes me whole. Because I know that cancer is going to lead to my destruction. It's going to lead to my death. It is the thing that makes me, my physical body, broken. Um, and there's not harmony. There's not unity. That cancer is going to consume me. It's not like, oh, hey, healthy cells, let's keep chilling here. It's like, ah, it goes after the healthy cells. So when I find out I have cancer, I don't embrace it and call it wholeness. I fight against it. I go to the oncologist. I go to the surgeon. And I say, can you dig this out of me, please? Okay, um, I need to be saved from that. And so I turn to someone to get it out of me. Only when it's completely eradicated can I call myself whole and healthy again. Okay, um, so we see in Acts 3, Peter doing the same things. It's our sin that's like a cancer in us.
So he's saying, turn to Jesus. He is the one that can blot out those sins, take them completely away because he's paid for them. Remember, it's not forgiving like, oh, here's the rug. I'm just going to sweep your sin under here so we can forget it's there. It's like, no, that sin was completely and utterly paid for by the suffering of Jesus on the cross. And the payment was accepted. And we see that in the fact that God raised his son again from the dead to live triumphantly at his right hand forever. Um, and times of refreshing actually don't come from other sources. They come right here in Acts uh, chapter 3, verse 20, from the presence of the Lord. Refreshing or wholeness or, or what we need to be complete comes from his presence, not from a change in circumstance. And the only way we can be in his presence is if we repent and turn from our sins and believe in Jesus and surrender our lives to him. Okay, so that's my answer to why we worship God. Okay, not because just he is wholeness, and that's enough reason right there to worship him, um, but because wholeness comes from him. He actually can restore it in broken people. And then what's really cool is that um, God has always been this way. Remember, Peter, he said, it's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers who has glorified his servant Jesus. So this plan for the restoration of wholeness started way back in Genesis 3 when we messed everything up. And he promised that through Abraham, uh, sorry, through the offspring of Eve, um, that that um, Satan would be crushed, that a redeemer would come through. And then later in Genesis uh, 12, through Abraham, all nations would be blessed. God has been working through purchasing, restoring our wholeness um, since the beginning. So that moves me to want to worship um, the God who is wholeness and can restore wholeness. Now I know this Devo was a lot longer. I got really excited to talk to you guys about this. It only needs to be five minutes. If you find that you're taking longer when you're um, working this out, that's totally fine. Um, because if you're glorifying the Lord and bringing in uh, great encouragement to our hearts, I'm all about that. So I'll see you guys on the 11th.